thank you for all coming. Um, Jack and I are going to deliver a joint unseen university lecture. Joint means that we keep interrupting each other. <laughs> and what it's about is science of this world, of course. Four. Okay. So I'm going to start by reminding you very briefly of what the Science of This World setup is and where it came from, and then we'll feed into number four. Is it the unbeliever with strangely folded documents? You know how lawyers always fold things lengthwise? They say that three is a good number for a trilogy, but four is better. <laughs> that is so, this world, I do not need to tell you. This world is a sensible world. It's flat, you don't fall off. Elephants hold it up, it doesn't fall down. Turtle holds up the elephant, they don't fall down. Nothing holds up the turtle, it's a goddamn turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and it runs on magic and narrative imperative, on narrativium, on the power of story, and it doesn't run on science. As Terry explained at great length to me and Jack when we wanted to do science of this world. <laughs> so given this complete mismatch between this world and science, at least from that point of view, how could we write science of this world, a neat link to the end of Stephen Baxter's talk where he had Terry actually holding the first printing of Science of This World <laughs> at a book signing at Warwick University. Indeed we did a second one. Indeed we did a third one. You can deduce this from the fact I'm talking about number four. <laughs> <laughs> How is this... I'm an obsessive. I like question marks at the end of my <laughs> questions. How is this possible? And the answer is the great breakthrough <coughs> that occurred, and we all claim credit for this now, because no one can remember quite how it happened. Terry, if there's no science in this world, you'll just have to put some there. <laughs> From which emerged the scenario of science of this world story, that in Unseen University, The wizards. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I love that picture. The wizards, for those who are like modern media, the wizards bring into existence round the world. And there they are holding it up. And because there's no narrativium, it doesn't know what size it ought to be. On the outside, they know what size it ought to be. It ought to be the size you can hold up. On the inside, it's our entire universe. It is so lacking in narrativium that it not only doesn't know what size it ought to be, it doesn't always know whether it, whether round world is the planet or the universe that it sits in. It does double duty for both. This is a nice literary device that lets us get away with murder. <laughs> and the theme of the first science of this world is Arthur C. Clarke's very famous statement, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, which Gregory Benford reinterpreted as the logically equivalent and psychologically very different statement, any technology, any technology distinguishable from magic is insufficiently advanced. <laughs> There's a nice quote from Mark Twain, the reason why truth is so much stranger than fiction is there is no requirement for it to be consistent. He was referring to truth there. Fiction has to be consistent. And as Pontus Stibbons remarked of all of this, there are no turtles anywhere. <laughs> Not on round world. A big puzzle to the wizards. So, that was round world, this world one. 
So I just wrote two plot synopsis, okay? It, we didn't know we were going to do number two. So when we did number one, we put in anything we could think of. The yes. entire, entire history of the planet, science, four or five different sciences, evolution, uh, origin of the moon, um, and so on. Uh, and if we realised we were going to do number two, we would by now be about on number seven, having spread the first one over several books. So by Science of Discworld 2, we had to we had to find a way to revive the idea um, and do something new with it. Now authors always have you know in the first volume you kill off the hero and then you want a sequel. And you find some way to revive him, to go back in time and change what happened or whatever. So this one happened after many discussions with Terry, which started with, we're not going to do a second one, are we? No, Terry. If we did, what would be in it? <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, Terry said, I know, Round World has been invaded by elves. <laughs> 